What's going on YouTube people? Welcome back to the channel. This is part number 18 of I'm taking Solihull Moors to the Premier League. If you've been with me for the journey so far, you will have seen that we have had a season in the Championship. We finished ninth in the previous season and today we've pushed on. It's the 5th of August 2028. That means we've gone through the summer transfer window. Uh, we're at the start of the championship season. So we're going to bring you up to date with everything that's been going on at the club. We're going to run through the club vision. We're going to go through the finances. We're going to show you the squad and the squad planner and those kinds of things. Show you how pre-season went and that will bring you right up to date so the first place that we're going to start as always is with the transfers to show you who has come in who has gone out and to show you exactly what's happened uh, in terms of the end of last season we had a few players who were in and around the first team who came in and were going out we had a few players that um were out on loan that had come back i can see we did actually nothing towards the end of the 27 28 season so over the 28 29 season we kicked off with a free transfer who was luke iredale he's an english striker as you can see he's another one of those that has come in and then gone straight out on loan i think he has a lot of potential he's six foot four so he's going to be good from set pieces and i think once he develops he will be a good first team option if we go into his actual profile you can see he's gone out on loan to exeter has previously played for manchester united and strikers f C. Uh, if we come back a page, let's go and check the next player. So, leaning on that American uh, free transfer system where they develop their own youth players and then we go and steal the ones with second nationalities, we have brought in Sol Kenyon. He's a player who used to play for Union Academy and LA Galaxy's Academy. As you can see, a right sided player who can also play as a makeshift striker. Definitely one for the future at the age of 18. I think he's a candidate to go out on loan before we start the season, but who knows? We might try and integrate him in and get him some first team football with cup games, that kind of thing. The next player to come in was Alan Taylor, who is another one of these players. He is a Canadian, has a second nationality of English, and we have loaned him straight out to Boreham Wood. Plays through the centre of the park. You can see straight away he's got good technique, good first touch, has good determination at 14, work rate of 12, acceleration of 11, balance of 15. So a very much one for the future and I think one who will certainly benefit having that season away from the club going and getting first team football elsewhere. We signed Elijah Field from LA Galaxy's uh, youth team or academy, uh, sent him out on loan to Accrington Stanley, another one 18 years old, Canadian with a second nationality, first touch, passing, technique, determination, leadership, vision, good pace. I oh, know, sorry, not good pace. Pace of nine. Um, has good stamina, good acceleration. Plays to the centre of the park, playing a couple of positions. I think he will be one that will be uh, for the future as well. Following on in that path, Aidan Quinn also came from LA Galaxy's Academy, a central defender by trade, 18 years old. Good tackling, he has good jumping reach passing work rate six foot two so he's a decent size for a center back i think he's one that will develop as we go along and another one that i think may get loaned out for the season to try and just get him some first team football in england we then signed jordan reese on a free transfer he has come from new york city's academy previously at De Anza force another 18 year old who plays an attacking midfielder or a striker another one 14 technique, 11 long shots, 14 first touch, good flair, decisions, good pace for 12. Uh, acceleration could do with a little bit of tweaking if he's going to play as that out and out attacking midfielder. But he's another one that I think we will probably send out on loan at the age of 18 to try and get him some first team football also. The next one is Matt Paul, another one from LA Galaxy's Academy, also played at Toronto FC's Academy. Um, yeah. Follows the trend. Another attacking midfielder who can convert to a striker if desperate. 18 years old again. First touch. Passing technique in the technicals. Has some decent mentors too. And then 13 for natural fitness. 11 agility. 11 jumping reach. Another one that is a candidate to be going out on loan. I don't think the championship is really the tier for us to be 
blooding these players in ourselves i do think we might need to move some of them on uh out on loan to get that experience at a lower level and then bring them back potentially uh, the next player to come in was romina lozano he is a goalkeeper who has come from ac connecticut uh, has played for rail salt lakes academy also uh 19 years old He's six foot tall, so not the tallest goalkeepers, but he does have a good set of goalkeeping stats. So he's definitely one for the future and one that I think we, again, can be developing, maybe loan him out, maybe rotate him in as a cup goalkeeper just to get him some first team experience if we can't find a loan move for him. But I do think he will do well in the long term. If it doesn't work out, he's already valued at 2.7 to 4.3 million. So for a no uh, for a free transfer it's a no brainer whatsoever then we move on to some players that you might recognize the first one is josh rogers probably won't recognize him because he's come through from um, manchester united youth academy uh, has now gone out on loan to colchester 18 years old plays left back plays a center back he's six foot two i think he's going to be decent uh, again out at colchester to get a bit of development and then we move on to the players that you will recognize so shane devoran has come back to the club if you remember we had him in the 24 to 26 seasons and then he moved to ipswich we managed to raise three hundred and fifty thousand pounds by selling him and then he was released by ipswich so we went and took him back on a free transfer uh, as i said he's a player that has come through the ranks at bw gotchi so he was out in america we bought him in sold him on and then managed to get him back so absolute no-brainer to go back and get him i think he will just settle straight back into the team as he was before and then the next one is a former club captain harvey williams honeyman who has followed the exact same path so we had him previously uh from 24 to 26 we sold him to millwall for 1.5 million pounds didn't work out for him there although he did play a fair few games out on loan at Wigan and Bristol Rovers. They released him on a free transfer. We went and got him back. And I think he's a player that will walk straight back into our first team. He plays that defensive midfielder, central midfielder, or attacking midfielder. If we're desperate, can cover on the wings too. 22 years old now. I really do think that he could be a player who's a bit of an uncut gem for the championship. And if we're going to have a push towards promotion, we don't have money to spend. These are the players that we need to go out and get to push us to that next level the next one we saw was daniel pippin another work in progress 18 years old was at west ham another one that i think at six foot four can play anywhere across the back if we could probably get him a season out on loan maybe somewhere then he will progress quite quickly i do think he has a lot of development to come but looking at his stats you can see the aggression the bravery is there the positioning teamwork work rate tackling but he does have some technicals to fill in so hopefully if we can get him some first team football everything will start to come uh, through in terms of his abilities and the final couple in fact the final one that we signed was mark collins he's come from the southern soccer academy after being at the img academy he's 20 years old he's a goalkeeper and he's another one of these goalkeepers who i think has quite a bit of potential uh aerial reach is good command of area is good handling good punching tendency 14 a bit high for me but it's okay reflexes of 14 is good and then he has low rushing out tendencies which is good as well probably a season out on loan somewhere will do him the world of good in terms of players that we have lost you can see that we have managed to recoup 2.5 million pounds now there is a lot of players here that have left the club on free transfers or loans uh, most of the ones on free transfers wouldn't have made it in the first team anyway and we have just got into that rhythm of getting youth intakes in and then shipping them out so no problems with losing some of those players the first major sale was joe newton he has gone to Preston for £240,000. Um, I think that's pretty decent. He did play 237 times for the club. Um, yeah, I, I, th I think it's a fair price. He's an injury-prone player despite playing that amount of games. And I think that when we're going on into the Championship, we might need somebody a little bit better. Um, 
Anybody else that we sold for quite a bit of money? Jack Moyer went to Birmingham for £11,000. Paul Marshall went to Rio Grande Valley for 55000 Martin Sheriff went to uh, Walwick for 76000 Michael Forbes went to Chesterfield for 110000 uh, and played 18 times. Former West Ham player and Burnley player. Um, I would have preferred to probably keep him as a rotation piece, but players like that, when he's only played 18 games in three years and you get cash values, you're probably best cashing in. Anybody else that went for big money? Uh, Benji Purcell. He went to Birmingham for £1.6 million. Pounds. He'd played 40 times in the first team. Um, yeah, Welsh International as well. Pretty sad to lose him. Uh, don't think it was on the cards that we were just going to let him go in the first place. If he could have kept him, he would have done. But the money that came in at £1.6 million, I think he was already on the verge of asking for a transfer anyway. Uh, we've hit that wall where we've got to the championship now and everybody wants top dollar in terms of wages. And as you'll see by the finances in a second, we simply cannot afford to be paying every single player the money that they want. We have to prioritise which ones are which and I think he was one of the ones that I don't think we can afford to pay. So we haven't actually spent any money to try and improve, but I do think getting those players back that we had before will improve the team overall. Uh, and then we have recouped £2.5 million to put towards transfers hopefully in january or maybe towards the wage bill if we stop off at the finances next we will see there is a million pounds to spend in the transfer budget now i don't want to go out and spend that on any old players we need somebody who's genuinely going to improve the team or become a player who will still be able to play for us once we reach the premier league if we get promoted so trying to spend the money wisely we have 154,000 available in the wage budget and we're spending 140,000 so there is a bit of money there to improve contracts for certain players but i am trying to be particular with the players that we give the contracts to because obviously once we take a step up to the premier league if we get there uh, those contracts will then need renewing again and it just gets into that vicious cycle of one player wants all the players want so if one player gets, all the players have to get. So just trying to keep a tight rein on the finances for the moment. In terms of the club vision, um, we're securing our job. We've got a B-plus from the board. Let's see what we get from the supporters. A B-plus from the supporters too, which is quite strange considering they normally rank us quite lowly. Uh, let's run through these quickly then. Uh, action with objectives, work within the wage budget. Obviously, I've just said I'm keeping a tight rein on finances uh, maximum one year contract for over 32s and maximum two year contracts for over 30s we don't tend to have many of those players in the squad because we are building from free transfers and those american transfers with the second nationalities five year plan for the current season is avoid relegation well we finished ninth last season so anything better than ninth will be a good result be competitive in the fa cup and be competitive in the carabao cup in terms of the board cultures, play possession football, play attacking football, play entertaining football, play high tempo pressing football. So you have to be pretty much a genius of the game to tick all of those boxes. Luckily, we are managing to hit them, but whether we will throughout the season, I'm not too sure. And they also want us to make the most of set pieces. Uh, they're delighted with the Josh Jackson sale, delighted with the Sol Kenyon signing, and delighted with the financial aspect of the Alan Taylor signing. Disappointed with the finances to loan out Luke Iredale, disappointed with the finances to loan out Josh Rogers, and disappointed with the finances involved in the deal to sell Kian Coleman. So those are the boards. Grumbles in terms of supporters, they are pretty much the same in terms of the supporter culture. Notable highlights pleased with the departure of Max Martin, pleased with the departure of Nathan Giblin, and pleased with the departure of Patrick Gamble. Disappointed with the sale of Benji Purcell and disappointed with the sale of Joe Newton. So, yeah, those are two first teamers that managed to bring in most of the cash. If we have a quick look at the schedule and show you what happened in the pre season, then. So, we started off with Port Moniz in uh, Portugal for our first game. Uh, played in that friendly and got absolutely hammered 5 0. Then played B Sad. What a name for a team. Uh, read their backstory the other day. Absolutely crazy what has happened with this team. But managed to get the win there. Katakunya, Dan O'Brien, Tommy Lonergan getting the goals. Then Braunschweig beat them 3-0 with goals from Diallo and Lee Alain. Kilmarnock beat them 4-0. Dan O'Brien, Benji Purcell, Amadou Diallo 
And then in the last friendly, we played against Fortuna Sittard and got a 1-1 draw with Diallo getting our goal. That brings us up to the 5th of August 2028 and we are going to kick our championship campaign off against Sunderland. So let's quickly have a little look at the squad planner. If we go into the reports and look at the assistant report first, this is what our assistant thinks will be our best 11 going into the new championship season. So Brinning goal, Rodney, Murphy or an O'Keefe. Wells Morrison, Henry Francis and Tetek in the middle. Then Springer on the left, Beveridge and Lonergan up top. I would say that is probably our best 11. I do think Honeyman Williams will get back into the team at some point. Uh, it's just who he dislodges and where he will play. But we do have a good few rotation options now in those positions. In terms of our strengths, eccentricity, Youth prospects, as I said, we don't really have a lot of older players. We have Leon Marsden, Joe Pinto and Billy Blades getting a shout out. Good standard of handling from the goalkeepers. Goalkeeper depth, defensive depth, defence and wage budget. The weaknesses though, passing, first touch, technique, flair, acceleration, crossing, kicking, aerial reach, off the ball, long shot. Yeah, there's lots of them. Uh, can't address all of those when you don't really have any money if we go across to our best 11 from james quinn our assistant manager it's pretty much the same 11 so it's Bryn, rodney murphy or o'keefe wells morrison henry francis uh tetek and then springit beverage and lonergan but the purple ones lozano who is one of our signings from the summer simon kelly daniel pippin another signing josh rogers who is out on loan and quintine at right back then got Dale Shelton, Sam Suarez and Williams Honeyman who is still coming in as our best youth player despite the fact that he is now old enough to be registered and doesn't qualify as under 21 Dan O'Brien, Luke Idale and Lee Elaine so we're going in the right direction and I do think that we are moving towards our goal of getting to the Premier League I think it's probably going to be difficult with not a lot of money to spend as I said that £1 million in the bank will probably be kept until January don't anticipate any big transfers either in or out before the yeah before the I don't think the transfer window will see us do any more activity there might be one or two signings if there's something on transfer deadline day but I do think we are in a position to build towards the championship and fingers crossed when we come back in the next episode which will be the January update before the January transfer window if we're in a position where we're in or around the playoffs I would be happy with that and I would take that every day right then I'm going to call that one at this point uh, if you've enjoyed today's video please don't forget to hit the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel so you don't miss any of the content whilst you're here there are now FM24 videos popping up on the channel those content will continue to ramp up as we get towards the game we've got some save ideas we've got some wonder kids already in place there will be new videos for Sally Hall Moors all the way up until the release of FM24 hopefully if the save goes in the right direction we will wrap that up and move straight into fm24 content once the beta is dropped it's probably going to be tight to achieve everything but we're going to give it our best shot anyway for this one i'm going to leave it there thank you for watching the video i will see you on another one very soon